Why is Noam Chomsky never on Nightline? I, I couldn't begin to tell you. He's one of the leading intellectuals in the entire world. I have no idea. I mean, I can make some guesses. Uh, he may be one of the leading intellectuals who uh, can't talk on television. You know, that's a standard that's very important to us. If you've got a 22-minute show and a guy takes five minutes to warm up, now, I don't know whether Chomsky does or not, uh, he's out. One of the reasons why Nightline has the usual suspects is one of the things you have to do when you book a show is know that the person can make the point within the framework of television. And if people don't like that, they should understand it is about as sensible to book somebody who will take eight minutes to give an answer as it is to book somebody who doesn't speak English. But in the normal give and flow, that's another culture bound thing. We've got to have English speaking people. We also need concision. So Greenfield, or whatever his name is, hit the nail on the head. The U.S. media are alone in that, that it is, you must meet the condition of concision. You got to say things between two commercials or in 600 words. And that's a very important fact, because the beauty of concision, you know, saying a couple of sentences between two commercials, the beauty of that is that you can only repeat conventional thoughts. I was reading Chomsky 20 years ago. I think his notion, he doesn't he have a, didn't he co-author a new book called Engineering Consent or The Manufacturing of Consent? Mm -hmm. I mean, some of that stuff to me looks like it's from Neptune. This is the first time the Neptune system has been seen clearly by human eyes. These pictures, taken only hours ago by Voyager 2, are its latest contribution. You know, he's perfectly entitled to say that I, I'm seeing it through a prism, too. But my view of that, of, of his notions about the limits of debate in this country, is absolutely wacko. Suppose I get up on Nightline, say, and I'm given whatever it is, two minutes, and I say, Gaddafi is a terrorist, Khomeini is a murderer, you know, etc., etc. Uh, the Russians, you know, invaded Afghanistan, all this sort of stuff. I don't need any evidence. Everybody just nods. On the other hand, suppose you say something that just isn't regurgitating conventional pieties. Suppose you say something that's the least bit unexpected or controversial. Suppose you say... I mean, the biggest international terror operations that are known are the ones that are run out of Washington. Or suppose you say... What happened in the 1980s is the U.S. government was driven underground. Suppose I say the United States is invading South Vietnam, as it was. The best political leaders are the ones who are lazy and corrupt. If uh, the Nuremberg laws were applied, uh, then every post-war American president would have been hanged. The Bible is one of probably the most genocidal book in our total canon. Education is a system of imposed ignorance. There's no more morality in world affairs fundamentally than there was in the time of Genghis Khan. They're just different, you know, they're just different factors to be concerned with. Now, Chomsky, thank you. Well, you know, people will reason, quite reasonably expect to know what you mean. Why did you say that? I never heard that before. Uh, if you said that, you better have a reason, you know, you better have some evidence. In fact, you better have a lot of evidence because that's a pretty st startling comment. Uh, you can't give evidence if you're stuck with concision, you know. That's the genius of, these, of this structural constraint.